the channel. For this video, I will be installing the motor and transmission into the chassis of the Model T. So first I need to bolt down the transmission pan. So this is the, the transmission pan, the oil pan. Uh, they generally just call this the pan of the engine uh, because the engine splits. The, the block bolts on here and it has a transmission attached to it and the hogshead bolts over this part. So this is the pan that is all sitting on. So this is where the motor mounts actually are is on the pan itself. So here is the original block that I pulled out. This is basically the motor mount. They used a wood block back then and it was tucked on the inside of the frame rail right here. And the purpose of that block was just to absorb vibrations. It wasn't actually mounted on it. It was bolted tight to the chassis on the top here. The block was just to absorb vibrations so they didn't rattle the chassis too much. So this is one of the old ones I pulled out and this one is okay. The other one was split. Uh, so I made two new ones. Cut these blocks out of an old oak fence post I had and they turned out pretty good. So these go in the frame rail and the bolt right here into the block and then the top of the mount block bolts directly down to the frame. Now both of these obviously have cotter pins because they're very important bolts and you don't want them rattling apart but they're, they're torqued very differently. This top bolt you need to put in upside down like that and it needs to be torqued very tight. This one is meant to be super tight and cotter pin very securely on the frame. This bolt, the one that goes side to side through the wood block, is not supposed to be torqued very tight. It is just supposed to be finger tight and the cotter pin put in. And the purpose of that is if it's torqued super tight, you lose the vibration qualities of the wood. You don't want it super tight. You want it to be able to just rub on the wood and the wood to absorb the vibrations. If it's torqued down tight, it's not going to absorb the vibrations. And that's what the original uh, service manual for this car says. It says specifically, do not over tighten these bolts. And I guess the reason is if you over tighten these, it vibrates and that vibration is going to crystallize the metal. It's going to work hard in it because it is moving so much and it could actually lead to uh, ruining your chassis. It could structurally weaken the chassis if you do that. So it's very important to not tighten these bolts super tight, just finger tight and put a cotter pin in it. So I'm going to be putting those mounts in and then we have a couple other mounting points on the pan. We have the front ball right here for the front suspension. I suppose you could call these the front radius arms. I think that's what they're called. But this is, comes up and is bolted to this mount right here on the oil pan. So I have the piece to mount that. And then up front here you have a band that comes over and clamps this down to the front of the car as well. So really you just have three mounting points for the engine itself. And then you have the one suspension mounting point. So I'm getting this engine ready to be put back in the car. So this is called the front plate of the engine. The engine has a couple main components I'll be talking about today. Uh, we have the block and the transmission. So this is all one assembly. And then the pan is the piece that goes underneath it. It is currently sitting in the car right now with the hogshead on it. I'll pull that off in a minute. It's just sitting on top there. But the pan is the bottom piece that is currently bolted down in the car. And then this is the block and transmission all as one unit. And then this is the front plate right here. And it covers the timing gear and the generator bracket. So here's the generator bracket. And this is the front plate that goes on top. And the engine is currently sitting upside down right now. But the top of the cylinders are down and this is the crank that will be turned over and placed down on the pan when I go to put it in. So it's recommended to put the front plate on before you put the engine on because of the crank seals. So this is the edge of the crank right here that comes out and there's a seal that goes around here to seal the oil out and then here is where your fan belt or your fan pulley is attached here and where your uh, hand crank uh, sprocket meshes with the bar right here to turn the engine by hand if you're going to use your hand crank. So that's what this is for and it has an oil seal on it. Now originally this oil seal is a piece of felt and that's what I will be reusing at least for this rebuild. It is just a half piece of felt that goes in this half and then the matching half that is on the pan that is in the car right now. So you just press it in, it's, it comes in a, a round piece, you cut in half and push half of it in the top, half of it in the bottom. So you just kind of have to press it in there, force it down in there. It's not real hard. It's real soft, movable felt. 
Um, I've heard mixed reviews on how well it works. Obviously, Model T's leak a lot of oil, and if you use the felt, it probably will leak eventually. From what I was reading, they leak quite a bit to begin with, and then maybe they'll slowly taper off a little bit as they get soaked with oil. They'll start sealing better. Uh, so you can definitely expect it to leak a lot when you first put it in, but I'm okay with that I don't have a super fancy garage. I don't mind oil leaks. I can put a mat under it and I don't mind it So I'm going to be reusing the felt the other option that is probably this the most popular option is to use a model a uh, car a gasket and the model a gaskets are similar It's a two-piece that you press in but they are a Teflon coated rope that you have to force in there and they're a lot harder to install you have to get them a uh, force in there correctly uh, Mike Bender with the Model T videos tips has a really good video on how to install the Teflon and I will link that in the description if you would like to see it uh, it is definitely a much better way to go for sealing out the oil I've decided to go with the felt because it is easier I have it right now and I don't mind a little bit of an oil leak uh, for the time being so that is what I'm going to, and I'll probably have to rebuild this engine in the not so distant future. I've just kind of revitalized it, but the Babbitt will need to be redone not too far away. So I'm not too worried about it right now. So I'm just going to use what came in my gasket set. But if you want to do the, the Teflon rope, uh, there, Mike Bender has a really good video on how to do that. And I'll put it in the description. Uh, there are also some kits to use a modern a neoprene sealed bearing, or not bearing, a gasket. Uh, I've seen mixed reviews on how well those work. Some people love them, some don't. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but there's multiple different ways to do that. Some people I've also read are gluing a, a gasket to the outside. They'll use the, the felt gasket, and if it starts leaking, they will glue a neoprene gasket to the outside of it to hold the rest of the oil in that's leaking through the felt. Um, that seems to be a pretty good option, too. I might do that if it gets too uncontrollable. Uh, so I do have options if this proves to be really leaky. It's not terribly hard to install those. You just have to pull the fan pulley off again and slide it over and glue it on. And they're not real expensive. So if this leaks a ton, I can do that to solve it. So that is my plan for right now. I have pressed this gasket in. I have the gasket for the front plate sitting on here and glued down with some silicone gasket sealer. I'll put some more on this side of the gasket, put the front plate on. And then when you put the front plate on, here's the other hard part about it. This is the hole for the timer. So the camshaft sticks out there, and this has to be centered on the camshaft almost perfectly for the timer. Now they sell a special tool to do that, and I don't have it right now. I, if I do this again, I will get it, uh, but I don't have it right now. So this goes like that, bolts up to it, and that has to be centered on there. And there's a special tool that you can slide on that centers it in relation to, uh, let me see if I can get better light here. Yeah, this, this lip, it fits inside of this lip and over the shaft and can center it that way. Now, if you don't center it properly, uh, you can mess up your timer. So your timer has these contacts in it, and if it is off center a little bit from the shaft, uh, your brush can uh, contact the timers the two, top two a little soon the bottom two a little late or vice versa uh, so it can mess up your timing on your engine and when your valves open and a lot of things so i have a new day timer that's what came on the car and i was reading that these timers are less uh, susceptible to being messed up when it's a little bit off center they don't mind it as much because of the setup this brush setup does not is not affected by being off center as much as other timers, specifically the Anderson style timers. From what I was reading, uh, they are uh, very susceptible to getting misfires and stuff happening when it is not centered properly. So this timer does not seem to have any problems with it, and so it has to be pretty close, but it's not as finicky as other ones. So I'm going to be reusing this one for now. I might get a new one in the future, but it seems to be in usable condition. So I'm going to be putting that on there, and I don't have the tool to center this properly right now, so I'm going to be carefully measuring it with the calipers and getting it measured by hand and in the center. It is definitely not the best way to do it, but I don't have the tool right now, and this timer is not as picky. So I'm going to try it and see how it goes, and if it doesn't work, I can always center it with the tool after it is assembled 
it is just a little bit more difficult that way, but I'm going to risk it for now. So that is my plan with the timer setup. Now I am going to put the front plate on, get it measured and centered on the camshaft and bolted down, and then gonna lift this back into the oil pan. And I have set the gasket all the way around the pan. So I have, I have set the gasket on and siliconed it. I'll have another layer on top. And the front oil seal right here is the other half of that felt that has been pressed in there. So I have that waiting to go. And now all I have to do is put the front plate on and we can set the engine in here. I just have the hogshead sitting on top of here to get it out of the way. It's not bolted down. So this needs to get removed and it'll set down and we can go from there. Okay, so I just finished setting the engine in the chassis. So I just have the hog's head sitting on it right now. I, it was not there when we lifted it on. Uh, I just set it on there to avoid dropping anything in the transmission because that would be really bad. So I just set it on there for right now, uh, but it'll have to come off again. But the engine itself is on and almost finished bolted to the oil pan. I still have a few more to do. But I had a couple of things I wanted to point out here. So the Model T engine is pretty light and you can strip a lot of weight off of it. Taking off the cylinder heads, manifolds, hogs head, uh, that strips quite a bit of weight off of it. So two people with my brother's help, I was able to just set this in manually, pick it up and set it in here. So also we didn't have the oil pan on as I pointed out earlier. We just set the block down and the oil pan is not real heavy at all. That was just uh, the way I did it, but it's really light. It'd be just fine to leave that on if you're going to set this in here manually as well. But we just left it on here, set it down. Now I'm working on getting all these bolts tightened up. These bolts either need cotter pins or lock washers. Depending on the year, some cars had cotter pins, some had lock washers. My car is both for some reason, and I don't know why. But some of them have cotter pins, castle nuts. Some are just with lock washers. So I'm going to be putting those on all the way around. You got most of them have nuts. A couple of them are tapped into the pan, these two bolts. The rest of them you have to do all nuts. So you start a couple of them, and I'm just doing this as the original instruction manual, a shop manual, says to do it. It says to start them, and then you gotta make sure the engine is all straight with the bearing in the back here. So I'm just doing it as the manual says. This bearing slides in and out, so you just have to be able to be sure that it's not binding up, that this piece can still move back and forth, and mine can with no resistance, that's just it catching on these nuts bolts right now. But it moves back and forth just fine. So the in, that means the engine is lined up straight enough that it will work. So now I can finish tightening down the rest of these bolts and the engine will be solid. And I have the front crank seal. I also put on the pulley and hand crank so I could turn it over by hand for right now. I'll have to pull this hand crank off again because it's going to need to get a final coat of paint and clean up. But it turns pretty nicely. It's, it feels, feels pretty solid. So i got to finish putting on the rest of these bolts and then the engine itself will be in the chassis. Now I have also working on the hog's head. I put new springs in it because one of the springs was broken. And so that is good. Uh, you just got to be really careful whenever you're working in this area of the engine because you don't want to drop anything down there because it is a big pain to get it out. Uh, if you drop something, you have to fish it out with a magnet. So it's, it's a big pain. That's why I set this on here while I was doing those bolts so I wouldn't accidentally drop something. So I'm going to have to pull this back off once I'm done with those and put the bands in. But I put my new springs in. So the order this goes is you have your pedal, spring, and then there's a special lock washer thing and then a nut, and you have to be, be sure that those are in the right order. Let me see if I can get a better angle at this. The lock washer has a little nub on it. Yeah, there's a lock washer. You can see it's got a little nub right there. That has to be pointed towards the nut. And then it has a, a lining groove that lines it up with the bolt so it can't turn. It's locked on the bolt so it can't turn. And then that nub lines up with a groove on the nut so that when you're going to adjust the bands, you can tighten or loosen that nut and clicks. And you just got to make sure that it's lined up with the groove whenever you're done. And that locks it in place so it can't work free. So that, that's a lock washer for those bolts. You just got to be sure that's on the right direction. Other than that, there's nothing real tricky here. But 
Now I just got to put the bands in. I have the bands and I believe I have a video out on uh, relining the bands. So now I just have to soak them for a couple hours in oil and then install them on the car. And the band just goes between the spring. One, the ear of it goes against the uh, piece here and the other end on the other side of the spring up against the lock washer and the spring holds it apart until you go to push the pedal. So I got to put the bands in and then install the hog's head itself and we'll go over the gaskets on that right now. Okay, so I have removed the hog's head and I put the bands in here. So they just slide in after you've soaked them for a couple hours, you slide them in. And they do sell a tool that helps with lining them up and, and compressing them. Just a little uh, uh, U-shape, I guess that's the word I'm looking for, U-shape clamp that goes right here and just holds these, these uh, tabs together. Uh, I don't have a clamp right now, and so I just used a piece of baling wire, pulled them together and wrapped baling wire right around them. So that's holding them in place. That'll work for now, and I might get the tool sometime in the future. But it's not it's not necessary at all. You can get by without it. But just peel a piece of bailing wire is what I'm using to hold the bands together for right now. Keep them out of the way. When you go to put the hog's head on, it helps to have them tightened up like that to put it on easily and then get the tabs lined up with the spots in the hog's head. So the gaskets on this, you just have the main cork gasket. This is the same gasket that goes all the way around for the engine block. And what I've been doing for this is just using a little bit of silicone gasket sealer beat a bit on the bottom to glue the gasket down and then beat on top when I go to put this on I'll put a bead of gasket sealer around there. Now originally at the factory there was no gasket sealer these were just put on dry cork gaskets and so the gasket sealer does help it stop leaks but it can still easily develop a leak there's a lot of flex in this um, so it, it helps but it's not um, it doesn't solve everything. And one particularly bad spot for leaks I've heard is right here where the engine meets the transmission. There's a lot of stress right there with the heavy transmission. It kind of tends to want to bend or, or warp the oil pan on the bottom. And so that is a common spot for leaks. And my car has a support brace that gets bolted up with it underneath here. It's just a little L-shaped uh, bracket that goes underneath here to help stiffen up this joint uh, so it won't... A bin. And not all cars had that. I don't, I don't think it was factory. I think it's an off, it was an aftermarket. It might have been factory in the later cars. I don't know. I know for sure the early cars didn't have it. Uh, but that does help to stop it from flexing so much and stop developing a leak there or other major structural problems. So that's this gasket. And the other gasket is right here. This is a felt gasket. So right now it's just a piece of felt. I had to trim it a little bit to fit. You don't want to like stretch it super tight, but in the gasket sets, they come a little bit long. So you do have to trim them sometimes. Uh, so it just goes over this piece right here that the hogshead mates up with to the engine block. And also originally these were put on dry. Uh, I am going to soak this with silicone and turn it into more of a silicone gasket than felt. And hopefully that'll help it not leak as much. Uh, down here at the bottom, it, they said, to, or the manual says, to put a piece of candle wick down here. I believe they're talking about this joint right here where it meets the pan to put a piece of candle wick to kind of take up that radius. I'm just going to put a nice bead of silicone right there, and that should take up any gap that is created where those two surfaces meet. Uh, but originally, they just used a piece of candle wick. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, you can use a piece of string. I've, some people said that they were doing that. Um, but a lot of people that I was reading about just did a uh, gasket sealer, so I'm going to try that. It seems better than putting a piece of string there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to soak this on both sides with silicone, put this on first, beat around, and then set the hogshead down from here. I believe that is everything that I have to do before I can put this on. I'll have to pull this ball joint back out a little bit. Uh, and then after it is on, we can put a bit of, there's a gasket here too that I've glued on. And so another set of gasket seal around the other side of that gasket and the ball joint can go on and the top of the hog's head. Well, the hog's head first and then the ball joint. And, but you can't put the bolts in that because the bolts go through the U-joint as well. So we'll do the hog's head for now. And there you have it. The motor installed in the chassis of the car. 
The car is coming along splendidly. I'm really happy with the progress. Be on the lookout for more videos. I have many more to come and we'll probably be releasing them soon. If you enjoyed this video or the Model T project, please subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment if you have any questions or concerns and like this video so that other people will see it. Thank you for watching.